All right, welcome everyone to our to my first webcast of 2024 as we come into a balmy Mequon at 34, 35 degrees. Of course, many of you have been at a deep freeze these last several weeks, and it started like the market had a deep freeze, I guess, uh, to begin with. Things have since been recovering. We've seen a couple of categories take off. But today, I'd like to be getting gratitude, and I'd say for the last few weeks, uh, I've been observing a lot of people and the challenges that they have. So I'd say without challenge, there's not a lot of things to overcome. So I'm going to say I am going big today, and I'm grateful for challenges. Um, let's go to my teammates. How about Ken? How about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Good to be here on the Zoom call with you all as usual. Uh, I'm grateful for my seven-year-old son. He had a big win in uh, something called Slammers the other day. Uh, it's second and third grade together, and he's probably one of the smallest second graders out there, so he, he doesn't get the ball a lot, as you can imagine. Uh, and so all of a sudden, he got the ball after like weeks and weeks and weeks. He got the ball. Someone passed it to him. He finally made a bucket, and to see the pure joy in his 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 body language when he made it, his hands went up. It was a big win, big confidence for, for my young guy there, so I'm very grateful to be seeing that opportunity and watching him uh, develop some confidence in what he's doing on the, on the basketball court. So it was fun. Awesome. Thank you, Ken. How about, uh, let's go to Zach. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm grateful for rereading books that I've read in the past with a new set of lens and uh, something that Chris has shared with me in the past that really resonated because it was an analogy towards fitness, but do we ever just go to the gym one time work out hard really once and then never have to work out again the rest of our life. No, it's the consistency. It's the, in the repetition. But yet when we read a book, it's, oh, I've read that or I've gotten something from that where something to start this year, I've been rereading a lot of books that have been profound for me in the past. And it's just amazing how you completely read it differently the second, third, fourth time through. So I'm extremely grateful for rereading great books. Awesome. Thank you very much. How about Michael? Mike, I'm going to go Mike. Oh, thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, this mic or, or this one? Um, I'm, yes. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for uh, getting out snowboarding this last weekend. Um, like we talked about in the last webcast, Wisconsin, it's been a tough winter for resorts. Well, it's been a tough few years for resorts out on the East Coast, and I was able to get out to Pennsylvania and do a little snowboarding, which was great um they were basically not even able to open until within the last couple of weeks and to get a little bit of snow is such a good thing for those local businesses and i'm, I'm happy for that also for snowmobilers i've seen a lot of snowmobilers on my trips up to appleton for volleyball this weekend so it's a really good point um let's how about let's go to ashley thank you chris i am grateful for being mindful it's a new focus for me and just taking one day at a time, not trying to complete hundreds of things on a day as most moms or parents or most people do to themselves, but accomplish a few good things, meaningful things each and every day. So that's something I'm working towards. Thank awesome. you, Chris. Awesome. You How about Lauren? Lauren, how about yourself? Thanks, Chris. Um, yes, I am grateful. I I want to start with saying I'm grateful for the team. I just am still so surprised by how much I'm learning from everyone every single day. Um, and then to make it a little bit more simple here, um, grateful for the weather warming up. I um, am looking forward to just getting out this weekend and spending some time outdoors, hopefully getting to go skiing. Um, that'll be the first time this winter. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Thank you very much. So with a couple of different ideas we, we've started here today, I'm going to call uh, our title today challenges. Challenges are very interesting now, and I'm going to find this as something that as we head into 2024, there's a big challenge that's coming sometime in uh, November this year. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called the presidential election. I mean, every four years it goes along with the leap year, and you know why they do it in leap year? So that they get one more day to campaign. No, really, that's, that's why they do it. At any rate, that's coming. It's something here that's going to be absolutely massive uh, to many people and absolutely probably incidental to others. If you looked over at history, I think you'd find a lot of people saying that the high points in their life do not revolve around who's president. So I'd like to bring some perspective to that. You're going to see a lot of the news media covering it more than ever because it's what they do. There are catastrophist media covering tribalism. So one of the basic human antics we have is called tribalism. I'm a Packer. You're a bear. We hate each other. I'm a 
you know, one Repub I'm a Republican, you're a Democrat, you know, they, it's just the same kind of thing. So when you look at this all across the, the, the guys, um, the guidelines, if you will, we're finding tribalism across many, many, many more categories. You're on Twitter, I'm not, whatever they call it, X. Um, you know, you're pro-social media, they're anti-social media. And these are a lot of things that are going out there. We're finding more divisiveness. Um, but as I look for challenges, these are challenges we can take a, a very good swing at. Now, there are stocks that are facing challenges as well. Netflix, for example, just one, I can't actually mention the stock. There's a stock out there that has to do a lot with people who uh, like to watch content online. And they made a choice, which was to um, kick all the free people off of your account when you have a certain account. So you've got five free people and you can be yourself. People thought, oh my gosh, that's devastating. Except for the free people who are on the account really do want to watch this, this uh, program. So they've been joining it, and there were some incredible sales announced just, just recently. So you're finding some interesting challenges that actually turned out to be very good for things. So I'd actually challenge you as well to say, what are your biggest challenges heading into 2024? I'm not big on resolutions. I'm more about um, intentions. But looking at 2024, we're looking at what are the challenges you're facing? What are the things this year you're going to surmount? We can help you with them. We can help you in many forms if they're financial or even personal when we're talking. But I'd like to say we did a wonderful thing here, which is listing every challenge you have. You can do that later. We won't take time now. Take a piece of paper out and write down all the challenges you have. The second step, circle the biggest challenge that you're facing. Could be health, could be the health of a, of a partner, could be anything, right? But circle that. And take a look at focusing on that. What can be done about it? We then will take a look at those challenges and say, if that challenge is met, if I can get over that, then everything else that I've written down here, I can also accomplish. So take a look at this. For some of you, it can be a wonderful exercise just to focus on what's important for you, especially heading into this rather than resolutions that everybody makes. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to join the gym and then never go again. You know, I'm going to buy some fitness equipment and leave it in the corner. Um, those are some of the biggest resolutions people typically have. But I would say rather than resolution, maybe it's an intention to take one of the challenges that you have up in 2024 and to conquer it. Maybe it's not feeling angst when the market flies up and down, inevitably, as we have presidential elections and other items as well. So I just wanted to touch a bit on challenges. There's many, many challenges in the market. And many of the challenges are actually the things inside of us that are human characteristics that we take into the markets. And we use them when markets show us some incredibly uh, high or low times. At any rate, enough on that. I don't want to pound on that too much, but I do want to pass our uh, first aspect over to Mike's Minute. Mike, tell me what you have for us. You've been seeing a lot of managers. We've seen a lot of great things coming into 2024. Um, what's going on when it comes to our portfolio? Or Chris, um, yeah. No, there's some really good things going on in the markets, as always. There's always really good things. There's always anticipation of things that may be good, things that may be bad. It's a lot easier for people to be bears because people are happy when you're right. And when you're wrong, the market's going up. So they're happy regardless. Um, <laughs> so given that, uh, we always take a look at kind of what are some of the things, some of the trends that maybe we could see coming into this year. Now, I do want to remind everybody that all of these are baked into the strategy already that we employ to whatever your unique plan may be. These aren't things that we're acting on actively making changes because we've already compensated for what could happen with a diversified portfolio. So that being said, some of the things that we might see coming into this year is there's a consensus around interest rates being level or going down. Actually pricing in as many as three drops this year is kind of what the market's looking at. Um, that's what the Fed has come out to say. We'll get more clarity on that in their meeting coming up on the 31st, but really it's the anticipation that it's going to be another pause. We'll see how that actually ends up panning out once that occurs. So what does that actually mean for, for bonds and different investments? Well, it gives bonds the chance to be steady, uh, have yield that or return similar to their yield or actually get some of capital appreciation if they come down. For equity markets, maybe less volatility. We'll see. There will always be volatility in equities um, based on cap size, based on different things. So expect that regardless. Um, as far as international is concerned, there's some eyes starting to turn back to China. Uh, there's an opportunity there for them to put some government stimulus 
heck into some companies because even though nobody really knows what exactly they're going to do, they do want their markets to be successful. And right now they're at all time low valuations. There could be opportunity there. There's so many unknowns. So we don't know. There is going to be a portion of most strategies, unless for some reason we decided to move in a different direction, which would have been communicated to you. Um, of China. So it's a small, small amount, and it gives the opportunity to just profit on that if that is does happen to be the case. So we're overweight in other areas for the exact reason of the unknown that exists in that space. The other space that others are looking at is internationally developed markets such as Europe. Europe is a mess. Uh, interestingly enough, sometimes investing into a mess is the best time to do so. So having exposure there is also going to be important as things work themselves out. Countries over there have done a nice job with their balance sheet. That really gives them the opportunity opportunity to put stimulus in if they do fall into a recession. It does seem to be imminent that a, a recession in some of the countries in Europe may happen before that does in the United States, which means lowering rates quicker, potentially stimulating equity markets, something that we want to participate in. Thanks, Chris. You bet. Thank you, Mike. So uh, Mike, I don't know if you guys knew that Mike um, used to bite his nails and he actually made a New Year's resolution that he would no longer bite his nails for the month of January. But his feet have never looked better. <laughs> nice one, Mike. You're super flexible. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, coming into this as well, it's, it's a great point, Mike. There's a ton of stuff going on both in Europe and others. And I think you're right. There's uh, emerging markets especially are historically do well when they revert to the mean. There's a lot of mean reversion that needs to happen in several categories, small caps, middle, mid cap actually as well, and also emerging markets. So those are longer term trends that actually are often best utilized when we're doing our rebalancing. We're buying more of a category that's been undervalued and typically, historically, we'll have a point in the future where it does well, although we can't predict when. So thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. I appreciate your minute all the time. Uh, how about Zach? How about your facts? What's going on, brother? What do we need to know about the, about the markets from your aspect? Yeah, thank you, Chris. We'll go through kind of year to date, but then as we talked about last time and, and previously to that, we don't really view things on a end of the year basis and then a complete reset. And if we only talked about the year to date, it would kind of diminish how massive the last three months have actually been. So I'll share the year to date and also kind of the last three months with a little perspective. Um, the Dow Jones, uh, about half of a percent up on the year, uh, last three months, about 15% positive. The S&P 500 is kind of where the biggest news has been lately, about 2% positive on the year and recently crested an all-time high that it previously set January of 2022. And uh, as of this morning, it was 4,864. That all-time high back in January of 2022 was 4,793. In the last three months, about a 16% positive return. And the NASDAQ, which is 50% weighted towards technology, is right around 3% positive on the year in the last three months had the biggest return of all the various indexes that we look at of 20.32%. The Russell 2000 is a collection of small sized companies, temporarily down about two and a half percent on the year in the last three months, right around 20% gain as well. On the international side, uh, temporarily down about one and a half percent emerging markets around four, and those haven't had as big of a rebound in quarter four, but we're right around five to, to 10%. And the fixed income, Side of things is still a conversation on what to do with our outside cash. The one-year treasury is around 4.84. The five-year treasury is 4.8. And the 10-year is 4.15. So we're still seeing opportunity if there's cash on the sidelines or if we know we have a purchase sometime this year or early next year. There's money markets still at 5.4%, still offerings through Raymond James, right around 5%. One thing I wanted to share before handing it back to Chris and Ken is just lately we've been, as always, looking out for clients on different things that we're hearing from other advisors or potentially products that are out there. We've seen a big influx in conversations about indexed buffer annuities and just products in general in the sense of, okay, now that we've hit an all-time high, do you want to feel what we just felt again or do you want to lock it in and get to a certain point and have no, all this downside protection where we're always very careful about that because volatility is actually essential for the long-term plan. Mike talked about that as well, but volatility tends to equal return. So we should never be scared of volatility because if there's volatility downwards, there will be volatility upwards during that time as well. And one other thing is just as of recently, uh, you might've seen or heard 
Uh, there's some cryptocurrency ETFs that got accepted by the SEC. So it's becoming a, a topic that no one talked about for about three years because they were struggling pretty hard. And now we're talking about them again. Just be aware about chasing those. And anytime there's investment, and, and Chris has shared this with us as well, where there's fear of missing out, whether it's artificial intelligence or crypto, it's never a great plan for an investment to get into it just by the fear of missing out. So we're always very cautious with those, but keep an eye on we're keeping an eye on the different developments there as well. With that, Chris, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate that. Zach did share something with me as well. He says that around the beginning of the year with all the resolutions, the gym is a very, very busy place. So he said it's probably best to wait for your resolution and don't join a gym until January 2nd when it dies down. So anyway, uh, it was pretty good. I think I saw that coming. Um, you probably also saw that coming as well. But I like the New Year's resolution jokes as we go on now. Uh, but why don't we head it over to, I'm going to call it Ashley's Advocate. So she's an advocate for us. I'm still coming up with a name. I may name it 10 different things, but I'm going to call it Ashley's Advocacy. Ashley, what's going on with us? What do we need to know about? Thank you, Chris. Today, I'm going to focus not only on a money-saving idea, but also a time-saving idea for you. So, of course, it's tax time. And we are all getting our documents ready to either take to our CPA or we're entering them into TurboTax. But you might want to check out it's deductibleonline.intuit.com. It was brought to me by the attention of a team member that currently uses it. And how does it work? So go to it's deductible.com. You can track your donations year round on your own time, and you can watch your tax savings add up pretty quickly. So there's items for running to goodwill. If you donate some items to Habitat for Humanity, for example, they will actually provide you a fair market value for the items that you put in. And you can see what that estimated tax savings may be for you. It also can be easily imported into, into or ter, to, excuse me, into TurboTax if you so choose to use that to process your taxes. So there's a lot of great items on here. Again, you can track money donations that you have given. Those items like did, um, Habitat for Humanity, Goodwill. You can also track mileage if you are looking at mileage donations or deductions and stock gifts that you may have given to some charities. It also keeps a track of all of the charities that you have given to. So you have a nice organized list for tax time when you are ready to file. And that's all I have for today, Chris. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. A couple of things that I have as well, and this was just, I think, by the Luthol Group. They showed that the S&P 500 has posted an average total return of 13% over the next 12 months following major inflation peaks, and that's since 1950. It's a wonderful fact I kind of learned, and I know a lot of you look for facts like that from us. We have them. We don't always tell you what they are. We're doing, we're really looking at tons of research. A lot of my perspective has been worth 30 years, and I've seen an awful lot of data and times, and the data doesn't always match. But in the rearview mirror, you can take a look at history and say, history often repeats itself. Not exactly, but it does rhyme. So that was an interesting portion. I recently saw a broadcast as well that said, once the markets had double digit returns, there's a 70% chance that the following year is positive. So looking at some of those, we have some positive ideas to come through. But also with a presidential election, a lot of people have a ton of opinions when it comes to what's going to happen. So I'm going to ask you this year for your resolution to stick through the whole year. Don't listen to your friends when it comes to what the market will do based on politics. Listen to Warren Buffett. If you look at your economics and your investments through the lens of politics, you're often going to be wrong. You're going to hear that from me a lot this year. I've offered this perspective to you in the past. I'm going to continue to offer it to you now and in the future. I've been through many of these. As I get older, it seems like I go, like I go through more and more of these election cycles. But the only thing that I've seen when clients make a move based on a candidate, I'm going to make this statement again. The only thing I have seen when clients that we've had, and it's been very few, it's been about three over my lifetime, that have made a move based on the political candidate, they've lost double digits or more. So I'm going to leave it at that. That's our experience. That's their experience. We didn't let them. They chose it. We still choose to stick to our plan. Our plan is built for elections and things much worse. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that as well. Uh, like one more thing as well, and I think in, we've been talking a lot about health. If you were on our nutrition um, just recently, our health and wellness uh, program, it's wonderful. Michelle gave us some incredible information about it. And I think when I was looking at it, um, 
my goal was to just eat 1200 calories a day. My goal was to eat 1200 calories a day. And I got to tell you, since the beginning of the year so far, I have exceeded it every single day. So just want to make sure that you guys know that's my one of my resolutions is to make sure that I eat 1200 calories every day. With that, I'll pass it over to Lauren. Lauren, what is it that, or I'm sorry, I'm going to pass it over to Ken, Ken's Corner. Ken's Corner, then Lauren. Ken, what do we need to look at in planning this year? Yeah, Chris, thank you very much. Sounds like the calorie thing is a challenge that we have to <laughs> overcome this year. <laughs> Absolutely. So another challenge that we're hearing right now is, <clears throat> is, is the idea of putting money into the, your accounts versus taking money out of the accounts, right? Those are two different strategies. For the for the distribution, the taking money out of your accounts, that that can be a very um, a personalized strategy that we put in place for you. So talk like uh, talk to us about that. We've already talked to you about that. If you're a retiree, we figured that out for you. Uh, but taking money out is a different strategy than putting money in. But what we're hearing right now is a challenge because like what Chris said, Mike said, the the markets are are doing well right now. They're at all time highs in some cases that we're that we're seeing right now. And what happens to investors is this. People get reluctant to invest money that they have, say a chunk of cash that they have from a bonus or money they've saved or something like that, and, and they want to wait. They want to wait to the, the perfect time on that. Well, the perfect time on that is right now. So it, it's really important to keep in mind as far as like what the money is used for and the time of this money. If this is retirement money, the money should go in now and buy those great companies that we're talking about. If, if, if the time horizon is shorter than that, then putting it into the market probably isn't a great idea. So a lot of people get wrapped up on this idea of the markets are all time high. And I don't want to invest money because all it's going to do is go down. We have to be really careful of that because if you like the markets today, you are really going to like the markets 10 years, 15, 20 years from now. Keep that in mind as a long term investor on buying great companies. Don't get wrapped up too much on, on whether the markets are high or low. Uh, get wrapped up on more about what your time horizon is for that money. Uh, and then you won't make those mistakes that we see sometimes uh, that, that investors do from time to time. So we always want to land on the stock ownership of things like that. So uh, with that being said, there's taxes. Taxes right now, people are getting documents. Uh, for some of your tax documents, uh, March 15th can be the, the time where you may get your, your last tax document uh, from us here at Raymond James. Raymond James tries to do a great job to get it correct the first time. They take their time a little bit more to make sure that it's right for you. So when you take it to your tax accountant, that it is ready to go and we don't need to make a lot of amendments uh, going forward. So March 15th is that is that latest date that you could expect some of your tax documents to show up. So I know it's late, uh, but again, we try to do a great job for you and get those documents to you correctly. So you can take it to your account to make sure it's done, done correctly, if that makes sense. So uh, again, if you signed up for e-documents or paperless, you're, you'll be getting emails when those are available to you or, or go online to your Raymond James client access to get to gather those documents. Otherwise, if you've elected paper, you'll be getting those in the mail when those are available as well. So sometimes we see clients miss a, a document or here or there. Our goal is to make sure that if, if you need help, we can furnish you with whatever you need so you can have a complete tax return when you go to see your uh, tax professional. So when you finish up your taxes, we do like to see them. They tell me that they tell us a lot about your financial picture. If you shared those with us in the past, we appreciate that. If we haven't seen one in a year or two, we'd love to see it because it, it can tell us so much about where those opportunities lie for you and where we can help you develop a strategy, whether, whether it be cash whether it be savings, whether it be charitable giving, we can help identify strategies for you that will benefit you and your money. Thank you, Ken. I know we ought to be careful because we've got some very, very smart clients out there. When Ken says, we'll do anything we can to help you, we will not make your tax payment, just so you know. <laughs> so I've had some smart clients ask those questions before, so I just make sure I clarify that, that statement. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. No yeah, thank you, Ken. Thank you. So I want to tell you something as well. So Ken's talking about taxes. Let me touch on it. I wasn't going to bring it up today, but there's a website that says, guess what? The future is here. The future is here. That's actually a false statement. The future is always in the future. Okay, but this website says the future is here. AI tax. So there's an artificial intelligence tax service now that you feed your documents in and it will prepare your taxes. You can be the first to try it and maybe it's fantastic. You might wanna be 
the 10th or the 100th or the 5,000th to try it. But those are going to start popping up. You're going to start to see artificial intelligence popping up more often. Why do I bring that up? Because artificial intelligence has become one of the hottest debated topics outside of the presidential election. Some people have said, could we vote for chat.gpt versus either presidential candidate? I said, I don't know, you can probably write it in. But at any rate, as I go through here, I wanted to give you something. Peter Diamandis is a, the head of the group I'm in called the Abundance 360. We get together once a year and we talk monthly about different major topics. We about every week get something about what's going on in technology. You've heard a lot of that at our forums before. It's been an incredible resource as to what's coming. For instance, we've been hearing about artificial intelligence now and its importance for almost nine years, cryptocurrency for eight or nine years, material sciences for, these things are, are not new to me, but now they're becoming mainstream. We're all beginning to experience them. And there's an interesting one here. I wanna give you these very quickly, but Peter just wrote something and maybe we'll put something together for this, but my top five concerns and my top five hopes for AI in 2024. Number one, top five reasons to be fearful. Number one, the presidential election, patient zero, basically saying AI is going to influence very heavily this election for the first time. Unemployment due to AI, everybody's concerned with that. In the shadow of AI, people's jobs are gonna change. Enforcement of AI laws, people are using copyrighted information to give you AI answers. Is that illegal? So they're looking at patent protection issues. AI powered cyber attacks and hacks at scale. If somebody doesn't like you and they put all their focus on you, can they eliminate you? Can they discredit you? Those are strong possibilities today. Loss of privacy and surveillance. Surveillance is everywhere. When you go somewhere and you're doing something, it's almost always caught on camera somewhere. So there's a couple. Now, top five reasons to be hopeful. I like to operate with hope, understanding this reality behind it. The hope is, number one, AI continuing to advance healthcare, making strides that we didn't believe were fathomable, curing diseases versus causing symptoms to go well. Tesla releasing an update to the FSD, that's the full self-driving AI that allows a car to drive by itself. Now they've got it tuned to believing there's very little error that'll be caused by the car. It's in it's a beta system right now. It's in beta stages right now and actually being released somewhat soon. AI enhancing education. This is something I'm finding very much more common. People are becoming much, much less enthralled with the education system schools are providing. It's more of a babysitting service. If we truly want to educate children, how about having an AI teacher that will teach the content that suits your child versus what the system teaches them? That's becoming big. That's number three. Number four, ongoing democratization of AI via open source models, meaning you'll be able to create your own large language model to have your own life co-pilot next to you. Not the person who sits next to you who snores and falls asleep during TV shows, but I'm talking an AI that helps you with your daily tasks, maybe also puts together your travel arrangements, all the things that maybe are difficult or take up time, allowing you to be more human. The fifth one, increasing human AI collaboration and creativity. So oftentimes using technology, which we do here to enhance uh, the humanity that we have. Now, these are the five and five from Peter, that's awesome. I'd say with all this though, AI has a chance to create the greatest possible hope that you have, has a chance to actually come to life with AI. On an equal side of the equation with that greatest hope, your greatest fear also has an equal chance of coming true as well. Remember, they're not all great operators. It's all being created with good in mind. Just so you know, I know I've met many of the creators of this, and they're all creating it with good in mind. We've not yet met a malicious person using it or creating it. However, that doesn't mean users will be the same way. I just wanted to give you a little bit on AI. It's a pretty large topic. There's four or five other things I was going to talk about, but I won't um, in, in due to time. But I got to say, artificial intelligence will either drive you or you can drive it. It's probably worth you spending some time on it, looking at it, looking at the large language model you might want to use, be it chat, be it, you know, Google has Bard. Um, there's a bunch of different services out there. But if you go into chat.dpt, you can go in and personalize it so you can tell it who you are. And there's you can get up to 5,000 or 1,500 characters to explain who I am and how I'd like the answers that are pertaining to me. So please, you know, give me this. This is who I am. It'll actually make your answers much more pertinent to the questions you ask. With that, I'll stop talking about AI. There'll be much more with this as I go to the Abundance Seminar, uh, Abundance Forum, if you will, in March. But I just wanted to bring this to you guys today is it's a wonderful co to uh, topic and it is infusing itself more and more to our life. And you might wonder, well, what the heck is it? We'll talk more about it at some future date and probably on our, um, on our forum coming up as well for our winter forum. With that, I want to bring it to Lauren to close us out and uh, tell us what should we be paying attention to? 
Sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Um, so happenings coming up here. So starting with today, uh, we have our January birthday club at noon. We are looking forward to seeing everyone there. And then next month's birthday club, um, that's going to be on Valentine's Day. So Wednesday, February 14th at noon. Don't forget to email us that picture of younger you for a fun game. Uh, and then next week, Wednesday, January 31st, we have our Ladies and Gentian Zoom. Um, it's a travel workshop. And a guest speaker will be joining us to talk all things travel, like safety tips, where to look for deals, group travel versus solo travel, and where to go. Um, so don't forget to register to that event. Uh, that same day is our very own Julie Decent's birthday. So I wanted to give a birthday shout out to Julie. Um, so then going into February, Monday, February 5th, we start our book club for the book, How to Know a Person by David Brooks. Um, and then on Wednesday, February 7th, we're hosting our winter forum. Um, this will be via Zoom. And there we're going to discuss market updates, uh, any Gentian updates, and what you should know for 2024 tax and estate planning. Um, that you have to RSVP for, so don't forget to do that as well. If you've missed any of our events, um, you can find those recordings on our YouTube channel. So all you have to do is go to youtube.com and search Gentian Financial in that search bar. And that's all I have for now. Thanks, awesome. Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much as well, Lauren. We appreciate you. And thank you for keeping us up to what we should uh, pay attention to. So two things I'm going to mention, the travel club with the, the ladies. Well, it's I think it's going to be organized through our, our ladies organization here. But the travel club is really designed for those who do travel, have travel. So it's as much contribution as you're also going to get in content as well. We'd like people who are avid travelers. We have a great one down in uh, Arizona. She's going to join maybe to share some of her tips, because if you look at a vacation, she's willing to do it. I'll leave it at that. Um, number two, the book club. <clears throat> it's a wonderful book, and I want to make sure that you guys understand. This one's a little headier than normal. I won't do always the Brooks Brothers, I call it, because there's an Arthur Brooks, there's David Brooks. We've gone back and forth. You know, we have um, something maybe called Same as Ever, which is by uh, Morgan Housel. We'll do some other books as well, but these actually end up being something in a line we've been looking at about becoming better humans. So I talked about AI. I've been a big advocate of us being better humans. If technology is going to take more of the aspects of our life over. So looking at a book like this as well, it's it's called How to Get to How to Know a Person, The Art of Seeing Others Deeply and Being Deeply Seen. There's a lot of research, a lot of references to other books. You don't need to read them all. You don't need to understand every bit of it. But as I get to chapters, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 about truly seeing a person, it's opening up a lot of things to me. I think if you're interested in really getting to know other people, more importantly, getting to know yourself better, um, especially as we're all at different stages of life. It is very cool to hear a 30-year-old and an 85-year-old on the same um, book club webcast talking about different perspectives. We learn so much from it. So when that's coming up, feel free. If you haven't read the book fully, if you're just getting it, just getting into it, do. It's a forum that I get to learn. We get to talk about things on a personal level, not on a market level. And I really enjoy getting to know you deeper in that as well. So I just wanted to put a little shout out for that. It's a wonderful item. Those who've been on it many times, it's a growing list of people, but it's a wonderful club for us to talk about things. And don't worry if you're not reading it ahead. Oh my gosh, I haven't read the whole thing. Sometimes it's just listening to it as a summary of it. So with that, I will say from our galactic headquarters here in Mequon, Wisconsin, I want to tell you from Gentian Financial, from my team, I appreciate them. We all appreciate you tremendously. We want to make sure that we went a few minutes over here. We want to acknowledge your time is very important to us. But with that, you have a great rest of your January. And join me in my challenge to eat 1,200 calories a day. It's really not that hard. At any rate, love to all of you. Thank you and have a great rest of your January. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.